Hi everyone, very good day to all of you. It's so nice to meet you here. Big thank you to the Malaysian Tourism Council to organize this Go Start Meet that we can exchange our ideas and thoughts to help each other. I'm Faith Tang, specializing in international marketing and business strategies. I cover mainly the APEC and Middle East market of diverse industry in media, education, international trade and healthcare. Today, I'm honored to be invited based on my experience, to so share some tips on repositioning businesses in the current global pandemic. CMCO is here. It's tough time for all of us. We are all feeling the pain and the pinch. Businesses are bleeding, and some of us are suffering from depression. So how shall we move forward? Today, I'll be covering five key points on repositioning for the new normal. Five key points. Do stay with me until the very end of this short video. Surprise gifts are waiting for you digital marketing classes and image consulting and uh, consultation classes from industry experts for those of you who sent me your questions and feedback so the first question what kind of world are we living in right now i'd like to give you the mega trends that's happening around us as you can see from this slide the university of sydney business school has identified six mega trends which is signals upcoming changes impactful technology evolving communities rapid urbanizations, empowering individuals, economic power shifts, and resource security. On the other hand, eBusiness Institute has also identified five mega trends, demographic shifts, the environmental crisis, hyperconnectivity, the health revolution, and diversity. So we're all hearing all about rapid changes and uncertainties. How should we position our businesses? Can I tell you one good news? Do you know that you're already a billionaire? Yes, you hear me correctly. You're a billionaire. How? Our brain contains 100 billion nerve cells. Branches connect the nerve cells at more than 100 trillion points, which means one brain, 100 billion nerve cells, 100 trillion synapses, 60,000 to 70,000 thoughts every day. This is how powerful our brain is. Unfortunately, the bad news is 80% of our thoughts are negative. So what do we do? Let's start with our mind. Crisis disrupt is your breakthrough point. We are habitual beings. We take the same path to work, go to the same restaurant, watch our favorite programs. It takes a crisis or disruption to force us to reset, retool and rethink the way we do things. Crisis is not the end, it's the beginning of your breakthrough. The late professor, American scholar Clinton M. Christensen coined disruptive innovation as an innovation that creates a new market and value network and eventually disrupt an existing market and value network. In fact, what's happening is not new to us. During the 2003 SARS outbreak at the time, Alibaba was only a four-year-old e-commerce company. When the staff were quarantined, they created Taobao. Now Taobao is the world's biggest e-commerce website. When the 2008 financial crisis hit us, those experienced bankers who got retrenched, instead of getting depressed, they went ahead to pioneer new business, fintech. Fintech has completely changed the landscape of the financial industry. One of the examples is Revolut. And of course, everyone knows about Uber and Airbnb, right? Did you know that they were also born after the 2008 financial crisis? They disrupt the old business model by empowering everyday people to find new revenue streams, offering creative, viable, affordable alternative to traditional workplaces. Number two, find your one and your zeros will come. One is the purpose and zero means your customers and clients. Find your purpose and you can position yourself and differentiate yourself in the crowded marketplace and the customer will come. One on its own is a single digit, but when you have many zeros, it becomes more valuable. It's the long tail, it's infinite. Just imagine with me from one to 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to 100,000, it's exponential. You can only become more successful when your customers become more successful. People want to live for something that's bigger than themselves. They want to be part of something great and big. So the purpose of our businesses have to have a meaning and not just earn money. Look around us. The successful businesses are those who help other people to get successful. For example, Alibaba Group Mission, 
is make it easy to do business anywhere. Apple mission is to bring personal computing products to help to help students, educators, designers, scientists, engineers spread the space, help people who have creative idea to success. Air Asia allow everyone to fly. Number three, tell a story and give experience. As you can see here, these two handbags are totally identical. Only the size is different. So how do you convince me to take out my money from the wallet to buy one of these and not the other? You tell me a story. You tell me a story. You can tell me that this handbag is a limited edition, handcrafted by some experts and only Hollywood airlist celebrities such as Angelina Jolie have this. You think I will buy? Of course, I will buy. So how do you convince me that to buy not just one, but two? Then you tell me, you let me feel it. You let me experience it. How great it is to have this handbag that I, I want to have two the similar kind for different occasions. So as you can see, story is very powerful and giving experience is equally important. Pixar, you arguably one of the, our greatest storytellers of our generations. They have won many Academy Awards. According to them, there are three elements to tell great story. Number one, emotions. Number two, great clear structure and purpose. Number three, main character. Hopefully it's an underdog that you want to help. I repeat, in emotions, Clear structure and purpose, a main character underdog that you want to help. Using the same formula, the NOR, the instant soup uh, cubes during the pandemic, they created a touching story of how the instant chicken soup brought warmth to the entire family, especially to the main character who was retrenched and to the family members with problems. Iceland. In 2010, a vo volcanic eruption happened in that country with a it causes a massive drop in tourism. They came up with a story inspired by Iceland, whereby they get the local Icelander celebrity to share stories about Iceland with live webcams and social media. And the result, millions in extra tourism revenue. And of course, social media Instagram recently ran a Love Run Deep campaign to provide ways on how brands can share a story about small businesses and indirectly and directly encouraging traffic to these businesses. Number four, convenience and quality. One of the common questions thrown by our customers is always, how much is it? So do you answer immediately or do you redirect the question, what do you need? What do you need means that you're trying to discover the pain points and the worry point of the customers. Do not answer immediately, just redirect the question so that you can understand the pain points and the worry points of the customer. Toshifumi Shusuki, founder and CEO of the 7-Eleven, commented the key rules to the success of 7-Eleven are to provide convenience and quality. Alibaba founder had the same approach. Both of them said the same thing. They say, do not ask the questions. What will change in the upcoming 10 years? Ask the questions. What will not change in the upcoming 10 years? I repeat, what will not change in the upcoming 10 years. And then you will find that it's so easy to do business. So what's the answer? What will not change? Convenience and quality. For example, the founder of 7-Eleven insisted on opening a bank inside 7-Eleven despite many oppositions. Within three years, the bank made money. So human being like us, we are so typical. If we experience convenience one time and quality products, we want to experience it again, you know? So you just have to let the customer experience convenience and good quality products. They don't mind paying that little extra to save the hassles. Final point, thinking anti-clockwise. Reverse thinking. Pre-COVID thinking. You have the products and services in your hand. You look for the customers and you match your product with customers. Post-COVID, new normal. Anti-clockwise thinking. You look for the right customer segments. You zero in the customers that want to be able to reach out to, their needs, their pain points, their worry points, their demographics, and then you look for the product and services that match them. For example, in February, the work from home, the, the remote work demand came about in the high level corporate offices. So in the United States, there was a, a startup Grow Work just launched six months ago, specializing in helping to transform home offices into a proper workstation. Now they are seeing tenfold increase in the demand. A wedding organizer in Turkey had to stop the services to hotels due to cancellation of international flight. Now, instead, they are compiling safety protocols for partner hotels 
to solve the COVID free space and also switching to promoting already locations to local couples. During the pandemic, a lot of people stay home and you will see an increase in demand for food ordering online. The elderly customer segment is very worried about infection as they are more vulnerable. So food delivery platform also came up with new features such as contactless deliveries and semi-finished products. Semi-finished product means that all the fresh ingredients for a package is delivered directly to the customer for them to do the final cooking. So as you can see, major growth in revenue are reported. In conclusion, how do we reposition for the new normal? Number one, disrupt. Crisis disrupt is not the end. It's the beginning of your breakthrough. Purpose, find your one. Remember your one, your purpose, your meaning. And all the zeros will come. Remember, the zero will only stop when you put the dot. So do not limit yourself. Story, tell a great story and give customer phenomenal experience. Remember emotions, structure purpose, and the main character. Story, a great story. Pain point and worry points. Always provide convenience and quality. Last point, anti-clockwise, reverse thinking. As you can see from this picture, you realize that in our day-to-day -day living, almost always, how do you open a locked door? How do you do it? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? you realize that only by turning 20 clockwise, you can open the door. So today, I hope to encourage you to adopt more anti-clockwise thinking. You know, to hopefully it will lead you to new possibilities, new revenues, new business opportunity and new business partnership. Send me your comments and your questions to my email listed here. Um, you send a chance to win a digital marketing class and image consultation class from our industry experts. I would like to and uh, the sharing with us anti-clockwise story, their very own home made in Malaysia example. Uncle Roger. Uncle Roger, the comedian made in Malaysia, Nigel Ng, during the pandemic, he made a parody of the egg fried rice made by the BBC host, food host, Hasha Patel. The hilarious video took Asia and the world by the storm when all the comedies and the stand-up comedies are not doing well. Egg fried rice is so common, something that we eat every day. But Uncle Roger took a different spin, adopted anti-clockwise thinking, and become an instant global celebrity. And even was even invited to BBC. His viral video now got 18.4 million views with more than 50,000 comments. So there's your egg fried rice. It could be that it's just in front of you if you just adopt the anti-clockwise thinking. Well, I hope you like today's sharings. Let's keep in touch. Um, stay safe. Um, hope all the sharings will help you and hope you can find new business opportunity, new business partnership, and new revenue stream. Take care. Stay in touch.